Hello, everyone, and welcome to Smashbox TV's Fast 4.99. Yeah. The Niner and the Holy Cow. Here we are. Nonetheless, not together again, but we're here with you guys. Our, our souls, something like that. Yep, yep. As, as I'm sure everyone here knows and can hear, Terry's a little bit sketchy on the internet. Not going to lie, but uh, we'll, uh, we'll make Wait, sure to... Wait, my sound quality? Yeah, your sound quality. It's uh, it's dropping okay. some frames here. It's dropping a little bit of your audio now and again, but we'll get through it. And on top of that, I'm deathly ill. So this is great. <laughs> I don't yeah. uh, standing up to come downstairs here was pretty much the first time I stood up all day. Um but I wasn't I didn't want to miss this one. So, I, you know, we'll see. If I have to if I have to run and or just pass out, I might do that. We'll see. I mean, all right. If you're not uh, taking one for the team or taking I, one for the show, I don't know what you're doing, but I am going to take one for the team. Nonetheless, welcome in everyone. Uh, as I said, podcast 499. I myself have migrated in a relatively warm state of Texas over to Florida. I am excited to be here. Friend. I am not part of the Disc Golf Pro Tour event that's taking place in Texas at the Texas State championships so best of luck to everyone that is and as part of that i will be over at the throw down the mountain property olympus Corksville, the canyon whatever you want to call it uh is where i'll be for the weekend so i'm excited about that and i'm also excited that uh in a little while we're gonna have our specials we're gonna have the new major winner in missy gannon and she's gonna join us and uh hopefully provide a little insight after the major this weekend and johnny it's end of march one major in the books What's your what's your thought on the spacing in which we'll see the majors this year? I personally love it, honestly. Um, I love to have an early. And I love to have an early major. I love to have a mid. We'll, we'll say late spring major. Um, I, I could go with then a midsummer one and then our fall one. I think it's great uh, having. I know there's a there there was some sentiment that it was kind of like just hey why you know it's so early in the season these players aren't even warmed up they're you know we're not getting the best golf I say too bad I want to see this I want to see which players have kept themselves in competitive fashion over the off season I, I want this like this I, I want to see these early majors I wish we had one a little sooner for MPO. I know the first one is going to be Champions Cup, but I wish we had one almost this same weekend. I think this is a perfect time. You've had what three events, and now we get a major. I, I'm I'm a hundred percent great with this schedule, honestly. And I'm I'm sure it's not going to be this way next year, and I'll be sad to see it go. Okay, uh, fair enough. Um, you know the fact that we have one here in the end of March, and it's exactly a month from now when we'll have the second one. That's going to be taking place at the Champions Cup uh, this year going to be held in the Peoria area. Uh, then obviously you move into the summertime, and then we're going to have one in the fall. We're going to have a few events that feel like it. We're going to have the playoffs. I, I I don't know. I can understand some sentiment that the USDG the USWDGC just concluded back in September. We just had it in theory. Anyone that won uh, and and that major title reign so it was quote unquote short for all, all the competitors in all the various divisions including Kristen uh, uh, it's so much about the scheduling and about the timing and that's how I kind of factored in we more of those details Johnny I'm going if, if you say my internet's bad I think I have a secondary solution so okay. if you want to take it away for a minute reconnect and rejoin you here in uh, hopefully under 60 seconds let's try that all right, yeah, uh, Theron Hobbs saying last week I said Wisconsin would not lose to James Madison, and then we got our butts kicked. <laughs> so that's a that's a true statement. I did say that. But yeah, ultimately, as far as the majors go, again, having this early major to me is is great. Um, we got to see it um, kind of, <clears throat> excuse me, we got, we got to see the players in less than ideal situations weather-wise and maybe not completely where they want their game to be. You know, Kristen Tatar has only played, what, two events in theory, and she kind of looked like it this weekend. I'm not going to lie. She, there were, there were a few things that were off with her game, but that final round it looked like there was a few things off with a lot of the women's game. So we'll, uh, we'll continue to kind of see... 
this evolve. And I, like I said, I really hope we get a good spread of, um, uh, of the, the majors throughout the year. Cause having them all backloaded, like the, was the original plan just doesn't sit with me. So yeah. And yeah, Kristen Tatar, we'll, we can talk a little bit about that real quick. We'll talk about how, you know, she had gotten bit by some fire ants on her ankle and her ankle was all swollen up. Um, I, yeah, I mean, there's, uh, it's Texas. Texas is almost as bad as Florida, which is almost as bad as Australia that everything wants to kill you. Everything wants to attack you in Texas. So the fact that Kristen had that ankle issue from whatever fire ants she got into, um, is, uh, it's unfortunate, but every player deals with some sort of injury or having to overcome something. So no, no reason that she shouldn't be able to do that as well. So, you know, it's, it's difficult, but we'll see. Terry, are you back here? All right. I, I think on me, how does it, how does it look and sound any better? Um, well, so far, so good. But it's okay. early. We'll see. All right. Well, hopefully this does work out a little bit better. Uh, so I missed anything that you had said, but, uh, have you, have you, are we, are we talking any results as we wait for Missy to join us? We have not talked results. We just kind of went through okay. a little bit, uh, of the, um, of just talked a little bit about Kristen Tatar and the hurdles that she had to have going into that. Um, but we definitely can talk results. Let me pull them up here. I know you, you were fortunate enough to be on the ground for for the event you got to commentate with zoe and val it was that was a that was a pleasure to get to listen to um as we said and our guest will come on a little bit later missy gannon wins this one uh shooting 12 under par over evelina salonen who shot a seven under and had every opportunity that final round to catch missy and just couldn't put it together honestly she just couldn't put it together um, her putting was atrocious. Her putting woes kind of snuck back up on her. And and you could just tell. Um, she didn't really miss a lot of comeback putts, which was good. But she was missing some of those initial putts. Uh, third place, Valerie Mondahano, who I'm going to say right now, last week was apparently a, a week of bad takes for me because I had said that Mondahano didn't have a chance to win. That she had showed us nothing this year that mm -hmm. proved to me that she would be in contention, um, and she was. She was leading. No, I'm sorry. She was in second place come the after the first round, and she really maintained it up there. So I'm, I'm, you know, if if what I doubt what I said even got to her, but if it was and it was a chip on her shoulder, great for using it. I mean, ultimately, it's uh, you, know, you can't you can't argue with the results. So Valerie in third place at six under. Own Scoggins, our ageless wonder, at five under. Uh, Heidi Line at three under, and then Kristen Tatar at two under. Ten strokes off of Missy Gannon. Seventh place, Jordan Linz. Eighth place, Ella Hansen. Ninth place, Natalie Ryan. And rounding out your top ten was Holland Handley. So ultimately, not a lot of, I would say the only surprise up there might have been Jordan Linz. In that she's only 930, yeah. she's only 933 rated, um, but shot above her rating. To, to get up into that top 10, she shot a 988, a 986, a 954, and closed it out with a 1,003 rated round. So just, you know, if if she's going to be one of those competitors that um, that is able to really kind of make things happen, then it's awesome. All right, Terry, give me a second here. We actually have someone in our green room. What? Okay. We 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 do we do we do so hold on one second all right hopefully the all the buttons to be pressed and we can make the magic happen <laughs> oh, i i i hope so i hope so terry uh and a, as you're doing that a follow up will be that uh we'll have hopefully some coverage of both morgan and jordan lins uh here at throw down the mountain this upcoming weekend uh as i expected we saw morgan throw a little shade at her sister Morgan, more often than not, although it's usually a close battle between the two of them, Morgan, you know, usually edges out Jordan. And this weekend, a very different tale. And as Jordan was up in the top 10 or 15 and then maintained that position, as you're talking about. So a seventh place finish, incredible uh, for Jordan. And uh, I'll be excited to see how they both bounce back this week and 
what the shenanigans, uh, what they're up to uh, between the two of them this weekend. All right. Are we ready, Terry? Are we ready to bring in our one-time major champion? What? Yeah, I am. You are. Let's do I, it. I am. Let's welcome in USD, U.S. women's disc golf champion, Missy Gannon. Hey, Missy, how you doing? Hey, good. How are you? I couldn't figure out how to go landscape. It it's okay. Working, it's uh, so. Okay. It's okay. If you rotate your phone, it might fill the screen, but if it doesn't, I, uh, that's all right. Sometimes yeah. it does some. <laughs> that's probably how you felt. That's probably how you felt uh, once in a while out there this weekend. You're getting a little sideways. Uh, first and foremost, of course, congratulations. Thank you for giving us the time. We know that uh, you, not only are you guys touring and traveling and on the go so much, but then you have all these additional. Uh, ass and uh, obligations and things that are asked of you. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much for joining us. So uh, yeah, for 40, 48 hours later, uh, roughly, yeah. d what does it feel like now compared to the moment after you tap in and, and Perkins is talking? What does it feel like 48 hours later? Um, I can tell you that I've repeated... Tom and I have repeated it to one another multiple times that, like, I'm a major champion. <laughs> I'm a major champion. Um, because a lot of the time you're kind of just like, you, you live the moment and then all of a sudden it's like on to the next one, which it sort of is that way. But I've been mm -hmm. trying to prioritize actually enjoying the fact that, you know, that I've ha I have this huge accomplishment and, um, yeah, trying to sort of remind myself that it's it's a big deal and not not just go you know not just move on you know actually actually bask in it a little bit yeah and it's funny because we often talk about players sometimes for good or bad we we ask of them and they ask of themselves to have a short memory right like uh, mm -hmm. any other event you don't win you're kind of like yep that's a that's a stepping stone and that's a learning moment let's move on to the next event but this has to feel different uh, like you said, with with the accomplishment in your back pocket, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it was one of the next things that I wanted to accomplish, and it was sort of a you know a goal of mine. And uh, yeah, it's it's not only amazing that it happened at U.S. Women's, but that it was also just early in the year. Um, you know, so it's like always oh, it nice to get a win early, but the fact that it was a major, um, just makes it that much more special. And, you know, it gives me that like early season boost of confidence that I think we all kind of look for when you're sort of getting back into the swing, swing of things. Um, and, and yeah, getting the, the new season started. And you've honestly had a bunch of big wins. I mean, we, we <laughs> multiple time DGPT champion, uh, DGP championships champion um throw pink <laughs> is this because it's a major does it does it feel different because some would argue that those other wins are quote unquote just as big on the grand mm -hmm. scheme of things maybe historically looking back at them does this one feel different to you though yeah. i think as uh as far as like a career milestone it does right because because of the designation because it's a major um and also because it's um, just a very special event, um, being that the number of young junior girls that I spoke to and gave encouraging words to, and they gave encouraging words back, back to me, you know, and and the aspiring FA1 players who are hoping to, or, or the, the FA1 players who are aspiring to be, uh, play in FPO one day, and, um, you know, having those interactions and having that environment be just such a you know such a special unique um thing was yeah just made it made it even more special and it always feels a little different um u.s women specifically i think in terms of the actual uh, like the four round you know same course sort of style that feels a lot similar to some of the other events that i have won but um but yeah the fact that it's U.S. women's and it's a major, it definitely holds uh, holds more weight on uh, for me, at least. Well, let me follow that up, and I, I don't. I hope I'm not uh, busting you out too much. But right after mm -hmm. we saw each other, and we were walking into the into the Austin Beer Works, and <laughs> no, nothing wrong with celebrating. 
you you confided <laughs> i don't know if you confided what you said you're like i i this like almost makes me wonder if i should take off from texas states <laughs> and, and yeah like a well deserved and if so it'd be a well deserved and totally understandable mm -hmm. break but wh where do you sit now here on tuesday night where where is that decision uh, I'm playing. I'm going to play. Okay. I think that if I didn't have a week off after that, um, you know, I already have the accommodations here. I already, you know, there is a, there, I actually like, I enjoy watching uh, traditional golf. There is a, a, an event happening in Houston that I will be attending on Thursday, um, sort of as like a birthday present. My birthday's on Friday. And so since I'll be okay. playing on Friday, I, we're going to kind of celebrate beforehand. Um, so, you know, I'm able to do a little bit something else uh, as well. And I'm just, I'm only going to practice the course once. There aren't very many changes that I saw. So I'm not really worried about sort of getting like a ton of practice rounds in. Um, and yeah, so I'm going to play just because of all of those factors. And, and then, yeah, I'll have a nice week off afterwards. Uh, it, to follow that up, speak to the grind that you guys have been on in terms of all of these consecutive weeks, including both Waco and this being a four-round tournament. Just speak to that a little bit as to what this has been like for you for the last four or five, six weeks. Yeah, it's been a lot. Um, I think that the month of Texas is always kind of like a big swing. And the fact that we and also had a major um, in there, I think, made it feel even more, uh, yeah, sort of, sort of overwhelming. But also, I think it's so early in the season that um, – you know, a lot of us are still really fresh and don't have that sort of like fatigue yet. So um, I'm, yeah, I think it was like a mix of both where it, it's been kind of a grind, but also, you know, it's, it's been fun to kind of have some bigger events earlier on um, with Waco being an elite plus um, and then Austin being, you know, a little different in terms of layout uh, well, i guess kind of a lot different um but yeah it's been exciting too i think having evelina having four different winners already this season and in, in four events is just such a cool exciting thing so even as a competitor who may not have won those other events it was fun to see what the outcome was and have some his like historic rounds and just you know new winners is just really really cool and to maybe follow that up, as you said, we've had this, you know, this parody. We've had all these different winners so far here in the season. What What is that? What is that? What should that uh, communicate to the rest of the world? Like, let's just say mm -hmm. you, you, whether you're a new viewer and you just found disc golf in the last year or two, or you've been around for 10 years, this year we've already seen, you know, these outcomes. What do you think that says about women's disc golf right now? I mean, I think we saw a little bit of it last year. I mean. Obviously, the big story was Kristen. She dominated a lot of events, but when she wasn't winning, we saw a lot of different winners. Um, so I think it was all just kind of a, it was all there. But, you know, the fact that she had such a historic year, um, not that it overshadowed those other, other winners, but like it was, it, we, we kind of forget that, oh, yeah, you know, we had Kat Merch win. We had, you know, Haley King. We had, you know, not not new winners, but a lot of different winners. Um, and Kat Merch was a new winner. So, um, mm -hmm. yeah, there, there, it was still really exciting last year. And I think it that was sort of a, you know, a little glimpse into what we were hoping to expect for the coming years. And I think we're already seeing that happen in in such a short amount of time this year. Yeah, and one of the things that Johnny alluded to just before you jumped on with us is the, the idea of having a major early might pull back the curtain just a little to who stayed sharper maybe during the off season or or maybe even who just prepped better, you know, as the season rolled up, whatever the case might be. W w how do you feel about an early season major and and having it in the time frame which we did? Mm -hmm. Well, I much rather I prefer that over what we had last year, where, where it felt like it was just so backloaded and like it's already so late in the year, and you know that's when the grind really starts to set in. And you know, there's there's some uh, something to note about that too, like who can stay sharp the longest. But at the same time, it's um, it just felt you know really backloaded. So 
you know, it, it was very early, but in my opinion, I think, you know, it, it wasn't, like I said, like the Elite Plus events also feel very prestigious and big and it's the same amount of rounds. And so like, I don't really know what the difference is. I know that it's designated as a major and it, that's a big deal for a career, like I said, but, um, but yeah, I don't, I don't think that it, I, I, even if I didn't win, I would say, I don't think that it was too early for a major. And now getting this distinction, getting this major, does it, you know, I, you answered the question about this upcoming weekend, but does it in any other way impact decisions for this season or anything else that you had planned or hoped for or, yeah, planned out? Does it impact anything else for the rest of the season? So far, no. Everything's the same. Um, I suppose I could, I was able to, you know, make my European, uh, you know, purchases and things, uh, travel stuff sooner, <laughs> kind of. Okay. <laughs> or at least uh -huh. a, little, okay. a little easy, a little easier, I, I guess. Uh -huh. um, but no, uh, no, I think that this year I did, you know, I will be skipping out on Music City Open in a few weeks here um, just to take a week off before Champions Cup. Um, I will also be seeing like friends that I haven't seen in a while during that week off. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm trying to balance, like balance my schedule a little bit, make some smarter choices so that I'm not burnt out early on. Um, and that, but that was something I was already planned on doing before winning this weekend. So no, I, I so far it hasn't impacted my, my decisions as far as what I'm going to play or how many events I, I plan to enter. Well, to, to follow that up in terms of planning and, and, you know, this new title added to your resume, every contract, I feel like, is structured a little different. Some, some players themselves put more emphasis on whether they win or not or only winning big mm -hmm. events. Some players, you know, are, are based more on maybe a, a, a more regular payout uh, or um, uh, what's more of a, like a, a, an even spread out salary system. Uh, mm -hmm. Give us details or not, but what what does it mean in terms of you and your sponsorship to to add a an M to your uh, resume? Mm -hmm. Is that something that's that's heavy in your contract or regarded heavily? Um, not necessarily spelt out that way, um, but okay. as far as bonuses go, it's it holds a lot of weight. Um, okay, so it was it was a very successful weekend on that front, um, and. Also, my relationship with this craft is such a tight knit relationship. It's 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 business oriented, but with the ability to communicate and you know, if say for instance I I won a major or I win worlds, I do have a two year contract, but they have already um, you know spoken to me about hey this is if you were to win worlds, we're obviously going to do more for you um, or whatever, what, you know, this major is also going to yeah. have that, a similar weight. So, you know, I have a, I have a lot of trust in them. I, you know, they've never done wrong by me. So I have no reason to not believe their word. Um, even if it's not written in the contract, it's, it's a, it's a great relationship and, and they treat me really well. So you were just on another podcast with, the Discraft team captain. Yeah. That, does that mean that you get to take the captain's raptor? Because you're a co-captain. Now, <laughs> I, I mean, you have a major. Yuli, <laughs> do, Yuli doesn't. Does, does yeah, that... he's been playing like 10 times longer than you. Yeah, do you get to take that captain's <laughs> raptor now? <laughs> well, I, maybe not a captain's raptor, but something might be in the works. All right, that's, so that was oh, the no. next question. And if they were going to work on something, <laughs> being a co-captain... Um, yeah. I'm assuming you can't share what that disc might be yet. No, but I'm sure you can make pretty, a uh, pretty good guess. Okay. But, mm, I, I have an idea. Yeah, I don't, there, there's nothing that that's like holding me back from announcing anything, but I just, we are, we are in the, we are very heavily in the, um, it's a brand new mold. So we're very heavily in the creation of that. And I've been testing testing the different runs that they've come out with over the last few weeks. I'll actually get another run tomorrow. So I'll be able to test those out. We're really trying to fine tune it to my specifications. Again, another amazing thing that Discraft does. And, you know, this was, this was already in the works before I won the major. So it's just, 
you know, just something that we've been working on. We want to get it right. Yeah, and I feel like as you work yourself through these possibilities, there's uh, obviously there's signature discs, then there's tours type series discs that we've seen, and then there's uh, commemorative discs. There's a lot of, I think, different ways to kind of, you know, in a positive way, manipulate what's going to work out best for both the company and for yourself on any mm -hmm. given, um, you know, any given success. Speaking of successes, I was trying to think if, have we seen champagne or some kind of celebratory, uh, you know, reaction? Ha has anybody been doused more than you in, in disc golf? <laughs> as of, as I think about all the previous years, there was obviously been excitement for decades for lots of winners, MPO and FPO, but your friends, they show out and uh, they show up. And, yeah. you know, even when I saw you right afterwards, you're comp almost drenched. Uh, what is that like having so many, so many friends uh, right there trying to, uh, you know, get in on the celebration and, and congratulate you? What's that feel like? Yeah, it's amazing. I mean, it's funny because after you win, it's like almost a weird, like awkward, you know, time where you're just like, okay, who, who needs me where? Like, what? what am I supposed to do now? Like, I've already, you know, I've already put the trophy up over my head. Like what, you know, what's going on now? It's, it's kind of like a funny kind of mm -hmm. time, you know, time. And so it's nice to have people there cheering you on and like be able to add to the celebration and add to the excitement and um, yeah, make, maybe make that, that time a little bit less awkward. Um, but no, that yeah, Paige and James were there to, um, which was really cool that a few MPL players were out there spectating. Chandler Fry was out there. A few others as well were, were caddying. Um, so, yeah, it was really nice to have have them there again. I didn't know it was going to happen. I never expected it to happen. So it, it's just cool that that they contributed to that that way. It was it was fun. I was really hoping we'd see maybe a bunch of the caddies give Tom a little shower with maybe just a little bit of champagne, you know? <laughs> well, we, we, we might not have seen it. But actually, uh, Paige's caddy, Jared, um, who also is part of the Guardian Aliens, they do all that really cool artwork at the events. And mm -hmm. um, he actually did take one of the bottles to douse Tom in because they, you know, they've become <laughs> buddies. And uh, so, yeah, he was like, he was like, I'm sorry I didn't douse you with it, but I had to get Tom. I was like, I understand. You're good. <laughs> You're good. <laughs> that, that, that caddy bro ship that's out there, uh, understandably. Uh, Tom, of course, brought in on the action uh, to uh, to help celebrate. Uh, Perkins pulled him in. Uh, I don't think that was probably necessarily expected or planned by anyone. But uh, how, uh, how do you rate Tom? How did he do during your during your uh, the the celebration and the the uh, interview and the victory speech? Oh, it was great. It was great. He he kind of felt afterwards like a little awkward that he was brought up there because he wanted it to be my moment. But I mean, he he does contribute a lot to what we do. And so like, you know, I wouldn't, there, there's a good chance that like, I wouldn't have some of the accomplishments that I have if I didn't have him helping me through those rounds. And, um, you know, we don't know uh, for sure if that would be the case. But I think that in my mind, I have sort of another weapon, um, somebody who knows my game really well and um, can coach me through maybe an, a tough shot or a scramble shot if I'm not comfortable with a forehand roller and he, he would be able to tell me what angle, what disc, you know, those types of things. Um, or, you know, just let me know that maybe don't take the risky shot, you don't need it or, you know, all those little things definitely add up. And I think that he maybe doesn't feel like it's they're as big of a deal but to me they are right and it doesn't matter how many times i tell him that that's the case it, it's it you know i don't think he understands like he really fully feels like he's doing a lot for me but i i i think that it helps a ton and um again i think it's just another piece of the puzzle that other people don't have and is a pretty integral part to you know getting through the rounds with less stress i would say it would be a huge lift. I understand this. I know what I'm about to ask, but ha has anybody thought about uh, trying to possibly uh, uh, hire Tom's caddy services on the MPO side? I mean, I know that would be double duty <laughs> mornings and, you know, and then maybe late afternoons. But mm -hmm. I mean, clearly uh, it, he should be paid to be out there. And I think maybe uh, there's plenty of MPO <laughs> players that could use him, right? 
Mm -hmm. Probably. I mean, you know, I think there is something to, something to say about him probably knowing my game more than I know my game, um, you know, in, in a way. Uh, and also being able to, like, read my body language or, like, know how I'm feeling, even if I'm not, you know, expressing it verbally. Um, so there are some key things that I think would be missing if he went to caddy for somebody else that he doesn't maybe know as well or whatever. But, um, I mean, eventually those things will, like, come together, I think, if they had enough time together. But uh, if if it wouldn't take away from my <laughs> ability to have him on the bag, <laughs> then sure. Uh -huh. But if it uh -huh. starts getting, you know, getting overlapped, <laughs> then that's, that's a no-go for me. <laughs> yeah, the first time he hit, he hit snooze in the morning because he's tired, you're like, whoa, whoa, whoa! We're gonna put an end <laughs> yeah. to this, you know, this double duty that you're pulling here. We need you, we need you fresh <laughs> and ready to go. Uh, that makes right. sense. Uh, you know, there's so much celebration of, of course, of you and the accomplishment and everything we've talked about. And then it feels like there was a there's there's maybe rightful well not right not maybe there is rightfully so just an entire celebration. I feel like of the event of of Austin disc golf, of uh, Mint, Chrissy Fountain, uh, Zach, uh, Zachary, all those guys. Like, in your words, explain what this Austin disc golf community and the women's disc golf community has been like for you guys, you know, visiting there for a couple of weeks now. Yeah, I think it was, a, it was honestly like the best of, of so many worlds. Like, we were in Austin, which is a huge city that has a lot of disc golf fans. Um, we had, you know, over 300 women and girls there with their parents, with their significant others, with their family members, you know, adding to like the spectator experience for the FPO field. Um, and I'm sure even for the, for the division, the other divisions themselves. Um, and, you know, I was just talking on, on, on another podcast of like, wow, the, you know, the turnout looked really great. And like, there were a lot of spectators and there were a lot of people on you know the green of 18 or on 17's green or watching different holes throughout the course and i think that was one of you know those were some of the reasons why we had so many people there is that it's it's an event that uh a lot of people that's the one event that they come to that's the one event that they save up money for to be able to go play or go spectate or be there for a family member or a friend um and I think it just helped that it was in a city like Austin that also has a lot of disc golf fans and a lot of pride in their courses in their city. And then Austin Beer Works was just like, if we could have a tournament at a brewery all the time, I think that that would be just the best, just the best for spectators and for, for the players. Um, it just, I think it brought a lot of people in and it made it more enticing to come and hang out and maybe you were only going to go watch behind hole one and hole 10 the whole day. But like, that's, that's fine. You know, that's a, that's a, that was a great spot to be. And then you could walk over to 18 when, when some of the final cards come through. Um, everything was right there. And I think the overall experience has always been really fulfilling. And like I said, being able to talk to the FJ 15, the FJ 12, all, or, you know, the FA twos, F, you know, all of the all the other divisions and people that were there um and you know give them words of encouragement or just talk through their round or like how did the end go seeing kids that were a part of my old you know uh longs peak disc golf club in colorado and being like hey this is so cool and you know repping the club and um just yeah having those connections it, it was a really really fulfilling weekend overall yeah, what I I would follow that up and say if your you or your club are thinking about any kind of event, and you know I know we're talking USWDGC specifically, but look at what it takes uh, to be able to pull something off of this magnitude in terms of the amount of courses that they had, in terms of the volunteers that you're going to need, the support that you're going to need, all of those types of things, and then see where maybe you fit in. Maybe you you don't have the capacity to hold a 350 woman you know, USW DGC, but maybe there's some other event that, you know, you could bid on or your club could bid on. And uh, it, it just, uh, one of the things that blew me away was the amount of people that talked about the immediate uh, uh, 
development of the Sprinkle Valley course. And yeah. people saying, you know, I was here six months ago and it was roughed out or, it would, you know, it existed, but just barely, so to speak. And then to see where it was at and then to have everybody talk about where they feel like it's going to go to and ultimately mm -hmm. get at, you know, after given a couple more you know, months or years, I think has been incredible. Um, for you, is there something that you, when you think about big women's events, whether it's U.S. Women's or the WGE or the Rocky Mountain Women's where I, when I originally met you, mm -hmm. what is it about some of those women's events that you want to maybe echo to the rest of the world and say, hey, uh, if you focus on these things, that'll help make them more successful. Is there anything that jumps out at you? Um, yeah, I, I think that um, I remember... I don't remember which U.S. women's it was in the past, but there might have been like a tea time, a funny like tea time thing where some of the um, some of the younger girls weren't able to come watch us. And I think they mm. learned over time, like, OK, maybe let's make sure that, you know, the FPO division is later in the day. And then it was something like that, where maybe we weren't as late in the day as we normally would have been or whatever, or now that, that we sure. were now. Um, but anyway, that was like something that, again, was was sort of like the feedback was taken and then it was you know since then i think we had like i said i, I saw so many uh junior players at the at tournament central or watching in the crowd um i it's just those women's events are so important for the growth of the sport and for again like i said i saw some fa1 players who who said to me, you know, I hope to play in FPO one day and were able to come and watch and see what we were doing um, and be able to learn just through spectating um, and then talking to us afterwards and being able to be right there um, to have those conversations with. And, um, you know, I think that it's important for that exposure. And even actually, I think like the FJ15 division, I think was filmed by gatekeeper media which is mm. so cool like they got they got that kind of like early exposure to cameras for for better or worse but i i think that it is all good you know i think that mm -hmm. it's just a really cool experience and have that post-produced uh coverage comment you know commentated by nathan queen and rebecca cox like really cool like it, it it's something that i think was uh, a nice addition um this year, I don't know if they've done it in the past, but it was the first time I noticed that they had coverage of, of those junior divisions. So, um, yeah, overall, I don't know. It's just a special experience. And I think that it's grown so much. I mean, we keep talking about the numbers and we, you know, I know that there was like a, something put out there about this was like the the most women that have won over a thousand dollars, like 48 women or something like that. Like, that's mm -hmm. crazy that we we couldn't even get you know, that would, that you wouldn't even heard that uh, a few years ago. So um, yeah, all of it, all of it just comes together and it just, it's so, it's so impactful for the future of women in the sport and it starts from the bottom and we have some of the youngest ones there and then some of the oldest ones there. So it's just a really cool time for me to even meet some of the people from that have built, you know, our division from the ground up that have been you know been there from the beginning like you know tita and all all of those people that i i've heard about but maybe hadn't met before or actually can talk to and 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 um have those you know cool conversations with uh yeah i don't know it's just special well it is and i think about someone like i was just going to quickly say johnny uh someone like sue horn pdga mm -hmm. number 68 is yeah. out there and playing and competing and having a good time. Um, and, yeah. and like you said, Tita Ugalde and uh, Chris mm -hmm. O'Cleary, one of our first ever women's, you know, FPO women's world champions who hasn't yeah. been actively playing in a ton of these U.S. women's. And then I saw her in the, you know, the player area, the vendor area afterwards. And she's like, this, this is everything we dreamed of 30 <laughs> and 40 yeah. years ago. Uh, it's been a long road, but the fact that we're we're starting to arrive and and get yeah. at some of these things, um, you know, I just looked. I randomly picked a year of the U.S. Women's just in the last few years, 2019. I I just randomly clicked on winner there, 2,500 uh, dollars. Mm -hmm. You know, so to fast forward just five years and to see you winning 
$12,000 at dinner just a few years ago was only, was yeah. I, I'll say only, but getting 2500 and there was probably only about two, maybe three people in the whole tournament that cracked $1,000 for the, for the weekend. And now seeing, mm-hmm. like you said, uh, as many as we did, just, just uh, incredible in terms of the overall growth. Yeah. So. Well, I'll even say like it, it kind of, um, I remember a few years back, maybe, you know, there were some complaints about a U.S. women's whatever, all the things. And, and like, and I think that it's, it's even grown so much since just a few years ago. And now, uh, you know, talking to some of the women that, you know, that had such a huge hand in creating our division basically um and having having more of those conversations with those people and a greater appreciation for everything that they've done and trying to stay now that we're at a point where it just seems like it's grown so much in just a couple of years you know imagine what it what it must seem like for those people that saw it from the from the ground up you know and so trying to keep that in perspective and and continue to be grateful for what everyone before me has done. And then when I'm talking to these junior players, trying to continue sort of that same, trying to, yeah, continue that path and, and, and try to be that same person that they were for us to these younger players and trying to take more of a responsibility uh, on, on myself for that. And um, that's just a, just a great time and event to be able to do that. And I think that now I would never say that, you know, U.S. women shouldn't happen, you know, or it should be separate from FPO or something like that. Because those were some of the talks that I feel like did come mm-hmm. up at some times. And, but I don't know. I don't know that I feel that way. <laughs> and maybe I did. I, that's why I'm saying that. Maybe I did at one point. But I don't think now I feel as strongly that way um, because of, you know, all of the perspective that I've gained through having multiple uh u.s women's under my belt now well we know that you're going to we're, we're going to have one more up here in wisconsin next year you'll be coming up here for yeah. a uh it's almost like a mini family reunion because it's gonna be up in the manitowoc yeah. area you've got uh Alyssa's family is you know uh, probably going mm-hmm. to be running the event and if we're lucky yeah. i'm sure we'll have you on the show before then but maybe we get on the way through <laughs> on, on a tuesday night we can get you into the studio here with a bunch of the other women oh, i think that could be a lot yeah. of fun that could be fun, yeah, for sure. Yeah, and that, I guess that makes me think. I don't know the exact date, but your your reign, so to speak, will probably be then a little longer, uh, with the last one being a little shorter and us starting out and uh, <laughs> ending in October and now start being in March. Uh, I'm guessing, mm-hmm. uh, well, I guess, as the schedule unfolds, I'm guessing we'll probably see you sometime <laughs> midsummer, maybe even late summer. Yeah, I'm not I sure they know. have the dates set. No, they don't. I just no. I just checked on the dates. But you have to assume it's sometime near preserve slash ledge stone would make the most sense. Yeah. yeah, we'll see. I don't know. Some Midwest money is ready for uh, Missy to show up and, <laughs> uh, and, and put it in her pocket uh, with ledge, yeah. you know, the likes of ledge stone being around. Uh, of course, you know, you, you didn't need a win to be more well-liked than mm-hmm. you are. You, you know, you're definitely a fan favorite out there by so many people, understandably, but w- how are, how, how much are you inundated and how much, are uh, the messages come flooding in? Does do you, do you have to uh, does some of that siphon off to this Tom just sitting there replying twenty four seven because you can't keep up? How does how does that work uh, after a big win like this? It is kind of like a, a balancing act because like you know I could sit there and respond to every single person or maybe just double tap a heart or something you know like trying uh-huh. to balance that all. Um, and I will say maybe I had a little bit too fun, too much fun celebrating uh, <laughs> Sunday night. So yesterday was a little tough for me um, to respond to people. <laughs> but, um, That's okay. It's okay. That's it okay. Happens, it only happens once in a while, you know. Um, but yeah, so if I didn't respond to anybody, just know that I was trying. It was. It really was. <laughs> <laughs> Your phone or your fingers might not have been working at the time. No. Uh, th- right, uh, right. So maybe explain to everybody. I, I overheard, uh, I, I talked to Paige briefly, and I had comedy lined up. But you, uh, what, what did you guys end up doing on Sunday night to, to go out and celebrate? 
Well, we ended up going to the Austin um, Cider Cade. So they, they have cider yep. and you pay pay one fee to get in. And um, so hard cider, what you know, soft drinks too, all, all the stuff and um, some food. And um, yeah, you pay one, one fee to get in. And then basically you have like unlimited arcade games and pinball and, um, you know, basketball, ski ball, whatever, um, all the things. So yeah, you, yeah, it was really fun to just kind of bounce around and play games with a bunch of people. A lot of people ended up coming. Um, uh, I basically invited the whole crowd. So it, I, I was expecting a lot more people, but thankfully it kind of, not thankfully, but it, it wasn't quite as many people that, <laughs> that I thought it was going to be, but it was a great uh, little crew of people. And then afterwards we just sort of, realized right around the corner there was a karaoke bar so we ended up going and going to the karaoke bar we were kind of late uh to the party so by the time we all signed up like we were never going to get on stage so whatever we got to sing with like other people that were up there <laughs> but uh it was fun it was a great time and yeah it was a nice nice way to kind of like let loose a little bit and and enjoy the celebration well, well, certainly well earned, well deserved. Uh, a lot of people, when they take down victories and have big wins or any wins of any size, have some kind of uh, special celebration. Uh, you know, that's almost reserved for just that. Like this is my treat mm. uh, when when I win. Is there anything that either you purchased or a place you're going to go? Anything you're going to do that's a little extra special that's kind of reserved for uh, for wins, especially when you're winning the biggest you know, cash prices, but, uh, any, anything oh. reserved for that special occasion? Um, not necessarily. My birthday is on Friday. Um, mm -hmm. so that was kind of like a cool thing to have this big win sort of like as a birthday present to myself in a way. Um, but no, like on Thursday, there is a, um, there is a PGA golf event happening here in Houston over the weekend. Mm -hmm. And the first day is on Thursday. And I, I enjoy watching golf. I, it's actually what I did each, each morning before the tournament uh, last week, um, watched it on, on TV. And um, it just sort of gives me a cool little like Zen thing. And ever since like Full Swing on Netflix came out, it, you know, I got to got to know, you know, <laughs> quote, uh, the players a little bit. Um, so me, Tom and actually Paige are going to go and walk around uh, in a, in a, Houston here for the Houston Open and watch like Scotty Scheffler, who's number one in the world. And um, mm -hmm. yeah, just have a cool little outing on Thursday. I don't know if there's any plans for my birthday. I'm kind of nervous to if some people are planning something and I don't know what that's <laughs> going to be, but uh, I've heard rumblings. If it doesn't happen, it's fine. I'm, I'm very okay, especially after having a nice celebration for this win <laughs> the other night um i'm good to just take it easy for <laughs> for the rest of the week <laughs> okay okay uh a yeah. couple of good follow-ups that came off the board someone did ask uh what what song you if you could get on stage and there's only one opportunity one chance one moment no if there's only one song that you get to <laughs> actually uh perform what what's the go-to the go-to is sir duke by stevie wonder Okay. Or any okay. or any any like nineties pop or late nineties, early two thousands pop because that's all all I listened to growing up was basically not all I listened to, but what was very pop popular was In Sync and Backstreet Boys and Britney Spears. So mm -hmm. like those are just those are just songs that I know by heart. But I sure. have done Sir Duke by Stevie Wonder many times. So Okay. Yeah. Interesting. I <laughs> what what a unique choice. Uh, I, I just don't think I I know anyone else that has replied or would respond that way. So I love it. It's uh, yeah. it's certainly unique. Um, mm -hmm. Is it is it any tougher to maintain a focus? I know you're you know you're busy and you won and and you're going to do this fun stuff and it's your birthday. Uh, I mean, there we always talk about like hangover, so to speak, not in necessarily in a literal <laughs> sense, but just kind of the yeah. the winner's hangover. <laughs> you know, come the next weekend. Yeah. You know, maybe your guards down or whatever. Uh, how how are you going to com combat that? How are you going to fight that off? Or aren't you? Honestly, yeah, I don't know. I don't think I'm actively thinking about it. I I I didn't 
practice today. I took today off um, and I'm only going to practice tomorrow as far as what's planned. Um, I know that the course hasn't really changed much. Uh, so, and it was pretty, pretty straightforward from last year. Um, like there's nothing that I could think of that, you know, was really, really difficult or weigh, weighs on my mind as something like I, I need to work on for that course. So I'm going to rely on, you know, my instincts and, you know, my, my pretty simple game that I already, you know, I probably could just go and play blind, to be honest. Not that I would necessarily win, but I think that it's because of how simple my game usually is. I'm not really worried about this particular park style course. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to practice tomorrow. I'm going to take it seriously. I'm probably going to take it a little extra seriously because I'm only planning on practicing one day. Um, and then, yeah, just enjoy a little bit more rest and relaxation. But I'm going to go into it just as ready to go and just as, you know, determined to win as I usually do. And yeah, hopefully it'll it'll all work out. But, you know, there, there, I'm sure there will be a little bit in the back of my mind that's a little little more carefree, but that could honestly work in my favor. So we'll see. We'll see how it all shakes out. Awesome. Well, we know you have a ton <laughs> of things going on. You, you still have people to reply to, I'm sure. Uh, before we let you go, <laughs> is there... Is there any, is there any, uh, anyone you want to shout out, thank, recognize, uh, places we can follow, support you, all of those kind of stuff, uh, and things, give us your socials and all that, what, what we can be doing as fans. Oh yeah. I mean, I mean, thank you to, uh, Tom, my husband and caddy, uh, as always. And thank you to all my sponsors, Discraft, Grip, Whale Sacks, Ledgestone. Um, and thanks for you guys for having me on. Um, you can, you know, you can go to my website, which is teamdiscraft.com. Um, and my link will be right there under Missy Annan to see all of my merch and stuff that's available. Um, we will be coming out with a commemorative disc for this win, um, soon. So hopefully that'll be out there, uh, you know, in the next week or so. And, um, yeah, you can follow me on Instagram. That's where I mostly post. So that's at Missy underscore disc golf. And I think that's about it. Yeah, thanks to everybody who sent awesome. me a message, and uh, there were there were a lot of them. So I, I if I didn't respond already, um, you know, I, I do really appreciate all the kind words and everything that people had to say. So, yeah. Well, again, uh, rightfully <laughs> deserved. It's uh, it's been incredible uh, to watch you come up through the game and and immediately. Uh, I I don't know if it's fair or not. I would like to say that it felt like you were almost taken under Paige's wing at one point early on and that mm -hmm. she wanted to help support and encourage you. And so to see you come into your own and obviously have the successes you've had uh, over these last few years and to just watch you grow as a golfer and then uh, as one of our elite players out there on the tour, it's been incredible to see. And uh, it's, mm -hmm. I, I think all the way back to those days of meeting you at the Rocky Mountain Women's uh, many years ago and yeah. uh, and then watching you at, you know, I watched, I remember Paige saying something to me about, you know, we're, we're thinking about asking her if she wants to, you know, be sponsored. <laughs> Should we do it before or after her final nine uh, at Am Worlds <laughs> in like 2017 or whatever that was. And uh, just to see uh, everything that you've done has been incredible. So. Uh, well earned, well deserved, and congratulations! And thank thank you. you so much for joining us. Yeah, tonight. and actually, to, to think about that too, I, I had a moment with Paige on the 18th green uh, this past weekend. You know, she was emotional and she was, you know, congratulating me and and saying how proud of of me she was. And you know, I reminded her like she she paid for my first entry fee into U.S. Women's um, back when I didn't have this you know, the, the level of sponsorship to be able to get that. Mm -hmm. Um, and so she, you know, she had a huge part in, in my, you know, come up in the game and it's just kind of a crazy full circle moment where, you know, my first U S women's was because of her. And now I have won the last U S women's that, uh, that I've participated in so far. So it's, uh, yeah, just a really cool moment. And, um, yeah, it's fun to reflect on those times, like you said, at Rocky Mountain Women's and, and yeah, to, to think that that was only, you know, less than 10 years ago is, uh, it's crazy to think about. 
Yeah, it is. Uh, and, and again, all the successes come from your dedication and your hard work and everything that you've put into the sport and to watch it all come back. I, I can't imagine there was one upset person on the planet uh, that was out there watching and participating in any capacity, uh, just as we've watched you win and lose with grace throughout all these years. And it's uh, it's been incredible to see. So again, thank you. Congratulations one final time. And uh, hopefully we'll be talking to you more. Uh, you're welcome to join anytime. You don't have to win, but uh, we, we're, you're welcome here anytime on the show. So thanks for joining us. Cool. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Missy. All right. Take care. Bye. Have a good night. See ya. Bye. Bye. See ya. One time major uh, winner, Missy Gannon. Awesome. Awesome yeah. to say. Yeah. And, and, you know, something I was thinking about as just as we were closing out is how DGPT had put out a clip or DGN put out a clip of asking her earlier in the year, you know, do you have goals? You know, what does that look like? And, you know, she said, I don't really set them, but I would like to win a major uh, to, to get it done at your first opportunity. Like she said, somewhat of a relief here in the early goings. And the same thing can be said in a sense that we all knew she was going to get one. It was just a matter of when. And, mm -hmm. you know, last year, Kristen didn't really leave a lot of opportunities <laughs> for others. She kind of went out and, and uh, locked those down in the fashion that she did. Uh, but for Missy to go out and get this first one in 2024 is, uh, is certainly pretty awesome. So, Terry, do you want to know who, uh, else, who else is a one-time major champion this weekend? Um... Well, well there's sure, a lot of people. I'm sure there was a lot of them, uh, but one Stephanie I was thinking Vincent, of. Yeah. Stephanie Vincent is now as well in FP40. Yeah, I figured we would uh, we would just celebrate a few of the other winners real quick. Um, Stephanie Vincent, Austin native, wins in the FP40, upsetting Jen Allen, I would say. Um, Jen Allen had her by about 30 ratings points. So the fact that Stephanie came in, I think I saw uh, some sort of stat that says of... Stephanie's like 44 wins, 43 of them are in Texas, which just means no, 40, she... 45 wins, 44 were in Texas. Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's a, 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 amazing. Stephanie is, uh, is one of the, one of the founders down there. So congratulations, Stephanie Vincent FP 50 JK wins this one by 13 strokes over Des Redding. Um, FP 55, Chris O'Cleary, as we had mentioned, FP 60, Pamiflage wins this, uh, Yep, FP65, Sandy Gast, FP70, Sue Horn, FP75, Lynn Gerber, and I guess we'll go through the, the FAs as well. FA1, Addison Woodward, FA40, uh, Janae Cheney. I'm going to go with that pronunciation. Uh, FA50, Ali Lawler, FA55, Kim King. FA60, Donna Stanley, FA70, Patty Adams, FA2, Micah Tilford, FA3, Nikki Haney, FA4, Susan Zapeta, FJ18, Rebecca Don, FJ15, Shelby Cohen, FJ12, Eva Lutsenko, FJ10, Hayden Harper. So congratulations to all of our major winners. Many of them are one-time major winners now. Yeah, I believe I was told mid-round on, uh, and we could go do the math now, but I believe it was 21 champions uh, ultimately crowned this weekend. So congratulations to all of our champions. Lots of great battles. I heard about some of them. Of course, Sunday night, everyone's done. We're wrapping up. It's the awards. Austin Beer Works is flowing, you know, everything's going on, and I'm hearing some of the uh, some of the war stories that were happening out there. Well, I had so-and-so by two, and this happened, and then such-and-such such happened mm -hmm. on the final hole, and uh, you, you, all the battles you would expect uh, out there. So congratulations. I've met a number of, of the winners that you just referenced as well. Someone like uh, Micah, who I know won FA2, has only been playing for a couple of years, and uh, just started around 2020 and has come up very quickly and as one of her competitors said to me later she goes yeah she probably played herself right out of the division ratings wise too uh <laughs> and and she's probably going to be okay with that so uh just uh, so many great stories and then to be surrounded by these legends you know i know we talked about tita ugalde and, and others uh so many others in in even more so in our 
uh, generation and seeing the the Des uh, Reddings and the Elaine, uh, the Des Reddings and the Juliana Corvers out there uh, on the course and then interacting with them after the fact. Uh, you know, players that we very much were around, uh, you know, on a weekend and, you know, week in and week out basis uh, was really awesome to see. So uh, congrats to all of them. Like I said, it was so fun uh, to to be on the ground and have all these interactions with everyone as best as I could. Uh, and the fact that the O-Town girls did what they did, I'm excited to, to see them this weekend uh, here back in Florida as well, uh, taking down MP, FP60 and FP65, Sandy and Pam. Um, yeah, uh, that was obviously all the news going on in terms of golf, all yeah. the news that mattered, in my opinion. There was obviously probably some other tournaments, other places. Some players, some MPO players were out there actively participating. Some were just passively watching and, and participating in that sense. A few players went you know, down to Houston or over to Houston and, and then started getting themselves prepped. But uh, all the eyes and ears were understandably and rightfully so uh, right there at the uh, USWDGC. So uh, tip of the hat again to Mint Dis, to all the work that they did, especially I think one thing that maybe gets under recognized even in this sense is that they probably weren't on the timeline that they either bid for or hoped on, but because the Texas swing is when it is, you're kind of pigeonholed, just like you said about Manitowoc next year. I guarantee, excuse me, I guarantee you, U.S. Women's isn't happening in Manitowoc in March next year. <laughs> it's it's not uh, you know coherent with the tour. And who knows what the weather is going to be like. So we're absolutely not going to have it at the same time next year. So the fact that the, everyone at Mint and all of the Austin area, after also hope it, uh, hosting the Open at Austin, then working and and coming back the next weekend to do what they're doing for the U.S. women's, I don't envy any of that workload. I, 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 just, I, I was going to say I can only fathom what they had to do and how they pulled it all off. So. Again, tip of the cap to uh, pulling off a very successful weekend. And and I think they probably reignited some other people's sparks about the idea of hosting events and or finding ways to cater explicitly and uh, specifically to the women's crowd because uh, they did so many things so right this weekend. And it was, it was definitely awesome to see. Yeah. Um. I don't know that I have much else. I don't know if you want to, if we want to wrap up a few other just random thoughts and call it a night, or if we want to bother closing and then coming back with an after show, or, or I can just give you a few more thoughts and then we could call it and we can make it a short one tonight since you're not feeling well. Yeah, no, you're, yeah, you're right. Like I just like literally 10 minutes before the show, I, I messaged Sherry. I'm like, dude, I think you might have to do this one by yourself. And he was like, Ugh, I don't know if that can happen in this short of notice. So I got myself. <laughs> Uh, oh. everybody say goodbye to johnny it might be his last <laughs> i've been muting myself it's this what, happens when you, this is what happens when you turn 46 you just fall apart terry don't do it don't turn 46 <laughs> i won't i won't i'm just, gonna stay stay 45 stay 45 when august, when august rolls around i think that's i think that's ledgestone week it almost is every yep. year uh yeah i'll just i'll just remain like you know, like an old record. I'll just stay a stay forty five. Stay at forty five. Good, good plan. Good, good plan. plan. No, um, no. Yeah, Terry. Let's just make this a slightly normal one. We won't do an after show. Let's. Oh, uh, did you have any other? What other thoughts did you uh, want to bring? Just this. This would be otherwise after show fodder. Okay. Uh, essentially, though, that uh, I ultimately took in five consecutive nights of comedy in some capacity in Austin. Uh, from the day the day I got there to the day I left, uh, so I'm doing the research. So some of you don't have to, and it was a, it was a lot of fun. Um, the very first night, and and it went it really as far. And yes, Austin is very much a comedy town, and obviously the mothership and Joe Rogan, all of that's like its own you know massive elephant in the room. Those are kind of like the obvious, but Austin just in general has been known for comedy, and obviously South by Southwest just wrapped up a couple weeks ago. Um, you know, with special screenings and medians and things of that nature. But when it was all said and done, I was able to take in improv uh, at the Fallout Theater the first night. The second night, I was at Cold Town, which, again, some many of you will be familiar with these names, but 
Cold Town, which had like improv and almost wannabe stand up, it, it wasn't great. Uh, mm -hmm. The third night, it was uh, Nate Doss and Avery Jenkins and myself did go to the Comedy Mothership, which is kind of the, I don't know, the most revered crown jewel, you know, uh, Joe Rogan place that Joe Rogan owns. Uh, so we went there on Friday night. Saturday night, I ended up on the north side of town at uh, Cap Capital City Comedy, uh, which was kind of the most traditional stand-up. Well, yeah, I guess Friday night was too. But uh, sa Saturday night was unique in that it was stand-up. It basically had an opener. And then Jason Mews, who you know many of you know from the you know Clerk, Small Rats, you know Kevin Smith world, and um, it was interesting. Like it clearly was a little bit of a like a super fan, almost. Mm -hmm. not, it wasn't cult. It was definitely a super fan experience. I, I wouldn't say I'm a super fan, but you could see this, the people that were, and so that was kind of interesting. And then Sunday night, I went to we I capped it off with one of the most unique comedy experiences in my life. And that was where uh, it, it was at the, the cave in the Creek or cave in the Creek or something like that. Downtown. No, no cover, no drink minimum, nothing, no item minimum, nothing completely free. And the format was essentially you put your name in a bucket. At some point your name would get drawn, but you, everybody puts their name in the bucket that wants to go on stage. You go on stage and you're supposed to get one minute uninterrupted to say your joke, set up your story, give your punchline, all that stuff. Do whatever you want to do for that one minute. At the end of one minute, everyone else in the entire place can just blurt out their heckles and their insults. And then it just really became how much can we roast the person on stage, regardless of how good their joke or jokes were it was just a matter of how much can we roast the person on stage and that goes on for about five to ten minutes uh they called it uh the banana f banana phone like because you're throwing back or heckling back i don't know okay it, it was there were of course moments of brilliance and hilarity and some things were really stupid because you basically then have a room of 20 or 30 people who also are planning to go on stage and they're all trying to be as funny as possible. So they're hurling these insults, some of which, you know, hit real good and some that didn't or landed. Um, it was just, it was bizarre. It was absolutely bizarre. Like you're, you're essentially signing up to uh, go get roasted uh, in front of all these people. And a lot of people were regulars. So, you know, uh, they're there clearly every Sunday night. And so there's some some traction with some people. I, it was just bizarre. I, I have no better way to explain it other than bizarre. And you got um, on stage? I did not. I, I oh. had no idea. I had no idea. I, I have nothing prepared in any capacity. Uh, he, the one thing I'll say to it that, that was disheartening is I feel like people are like, they're, they're just waiting with bated breath oh. for like, 45 seconds to hit or 50 seconds to hit they don't even they don't even care at all what the jokes were even good or bad it felt like every single person that went up there quote unquote bombed because all people were concerned about is how were they going to heckle the person like it, you're 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 you were definitely stepping up there with like two strikes against you uh and it's not even fair i wonder but, uh, how and it maybe was, you could, it was wild. Maybe you could attest to this, but I wonder if like you got up there, you did like 45 or 50 seconds and then you know it's coming. You sit down and just say something like and I was just diagnosed with cancer. And just see what happens to the crowd. Like just <laughs> just try to kill the crowd coming at you. I'm clearly not true or anything like that, but I wonder if you could. I don't think they would have cared. I, no, I don't, don't think, think okay. they, they No, because the whole point is to like absolutely uh, break down this person. So you have to go up there. Yeah. Like, you, I mean, you know the format, right? So you have to go up there just knowing, I mean, whether it was your height or your weight, your size, your, you know, they, they, they say they tried to stay away from racist jokes that didn't go so well. Uh, they, they, 
they they go after anything and everything. And then there's a whole panel of people that are kind of like, I'll call them like the professional hecklers. There's like five people up in front that have mics. Oh, wow. And they're a little bit more established comedians, local comedians. And so they're like leading the charge. But then if I wanted to blurt something out, there was nothing, you know, and if it was funny, it got a laugh. If it wasn't, you know, so on. But it just, it, it was such a unique, you know, after seeing a couple of standups, after seeing a little bit of the improv, you know, it was just such a perfect way to kind of round out my fifth night in a row there. So uh, That's 10 out of 10 recommend going to see it. Just know you're in for a, a, a unique treat. Uh, and it worked out well because it was 10 o'clock on a Sunday night. And a lot of the shows, you know, with us not getting done until 6, 6.30, whatever, and then mm. socializing at Austin Beer Works, it, it was really tough to try and get to some of the shows unless they were later. So it, it worked out really well um, in that sense. But, um, yeah, it was, <laughs> it was kind of cool. Uh, other people that I met uh, included Michael. Uh, over at Austin Beer Works, uh, him and I had maybe actually crossed paths 13, 12, 13, 14 years ago at, in some capacity. So that was pretty cool. Uh, and and that, again, just to echo what Austin Beer Works has done with, you know, teaming up with Mint on that Sprinkle Valley property, uh, Missy said it best. And there were others that said that, like, this is this is what every big tournament should be, is at a brewery with food carts, with tons of vending, and then, you know, the 50 acres in the back that have a, a world championship course on it um, that all might be a little bit uh, pie in the sky and a little bit uh, ambitious, but everyone, and everyone loved it. The only people that didn't were some of the other divisions that then had, you know, play for their day and then maybe a little bit of a long journey to get out to Sprinkle Valley. I mean, you have 350 women. Yeah, you can't. There's only and there's a lot of courses in Austin, but there's even still only so many uh, major quality courses in the area. And with the, with as many groups as you have, somebody's going to have uh, the to make division. the drive. Yeah, and then you've got all the different divisions, and you're ranging mm -hmm. from FJ tens, you know, to to FA sixties, and then FPO is like you just you have a lot of different skill sets, which honestly makes this event, one of, I think, one of the most daunting and challenging of the year to run because you have such a huge disparity or, and, and, and vast difference in, in player caliber. And that's no rip on anyone, but you're, you know, uh, your two different divisions, or, or I'm sorry, your, your 21 different divisions have very different needs. And inevitably, you're going to get someone that's saying, oh, we're playing this course and it's way too easy. And another division is going to say, we're playing this course and this is way above our skill level. Sure. Like it's, it's, I'm not making excuses, but it's damn near unavoidable. Like, yeah, just, I was, I was wondering if Manitowoc is going to get any new courses for this I, or, or if, if I don't if think they need it. I don't think new, I think there's, you know, a lot of courses in, in Manitowoc, Wisconsin, yeah. uh, you know, not far from Johnny, where Johnny and I are, I can, we can speak to it because First of all, a lot of the courses have multiple tees. Like yeah. that's just something Wisconsin's largely has invested in at a lot of courses. So multiple tees can certainly help that. And then we do have a variety of courses in that area because you have, uh, you know, Indian Creek. I know Johnny, which yeah. you know you and I had played, and then kind of was forgotten for a while. I think that's going to get rehabbed sure. and be very playable for Cato, appropriate divisions. Yep. Cato Falls. Cato Falls. Uh, Silver Creek has the two courses or potentially one, yeah. depending on how you look at it. And then you're out at Rolling Ridge where they have th two or three tees and then two or three baskets out of every single hole yeah. and it's private property. So you have options there for mm -hmm. various, uh, you know, abilities. So I, I don't think that, uh, you know, those are just a few off the top of our head. You could, uh, even, go, you could even go down to Cleveland, the Cleveland uh, course, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know if you could play that one. But Lakeshore Technical College. That, that's what I meant. The Lakeshore Technical College. Uh, yeah. That's the one LTC. I was thinking. Yeah. So, um, yeah. you know, Sheboygan's only 30 minutes away. So yeah. anyway, um, yeah, so I, it, it was so great to see, you know, and I, I love all the effort and the energy and mm. uh, it's tough. A lot of people loved, look at last year, they were in what, North Carolina and all three courses were in the same park. So you had that huge advantage, even with a diversity of courses. This year, they couldn't all obviously be at the same site, 
but you probably have them a little more tailored to each of the divisions more uh, even more finely tuned because you had those options. So, um, yeah, pretty cool to see for sure. Uh, so that anyway, I wanted to share that Austin, you know, comedy experience, uh, going out with Nate and Avery to, uh, to Joe Rogan's, you know, the comedy mothership is, is, I feel like if you're at all into comedy, everybody has that on their list while you're there Mm -hmm. is to be able to check that out. So yes, it was pretty cool. Uh, you know, it's really serious that you, you go in and they take your phone and put it in a, you know, RFID protected bag that's locked. So like. You can't even get into. They let you hold on to it, but you can't get into your phone uh, or access it for the entire time that you're in there. Um, obviously, trying to protect all the comedians. The comedians were all really good that night. I don't remember all the names, but they were really. Most of them were really good, except for the closer. So it was. Uh, it was. It, yeah, it was definitely a cool experience. And uh, Houston, just a really quick uh, look forward to uh, that. Uh, as I said at the top of the show, I am not involved with Houston's broadcast. I Me neither. Ian and the rest of the crew will be. Will be Ian and GK, uh, JK uh, Corver. I had to guess. I don't think it's Zoe. All right, we'll figure and it out. And probably Ian and Philo. Yeah. Uh, so I uh, hope everything goes well, of course. They have uh, g- good luck and a good time there. Uh, I myself will be at, like I said, at Throw Down the Mountain uh, for the final weekend, the Pro uh, MP40 and MPO weekend. Uh, looking forward to coverage. Uh, depending on how things go, we're probably not, we're intentionally not going to try and release and compete with the Austin's coverage. Like, that doesn't make a lot of sense for me. So there will be recording, of course, and um, working on getting it all edited, but it may get delayed by a couple days because trying to release it when everything's going on in, I'm not Austin, sorry, Houston. Uh, it doesn't necessarily make a lot of sense. So it'll probably be delayed by a couple of days intentionally. So before anyone uh, gets uh, worked up, just letting you know. Ace Run is on the board and saying Eisenhood 2, we believe. Oh, from Alta World. So maybe it's Charlie's in the booth with with uh, those guys? Oh, it wouldn't be. be Charlie and Ian. No. So it's probably Charlie and somebody. Ace Run, what, what are you guys doing? Are you guys both off this weekend? It's just goofing around? I'll send you a message. Uh, yeah, Johnny. Uh, Johnny celebrated his birthday last Wednesday as we closed Yay. out the show. You're older. I'm, I'm not. older. That's good. Um, I don't. I don't know that I have um, much else of, of significance at the moment that we can't cut you loose. You're not feeling well, and uh, I've got prep work to do. Excited for this weekend. Yeah. No. That's uh, that. You got anything else? else? No, not really. That all sounds phenomenal. Next week we'll have. I, I don't know if we have anything special lined up for episode 500, but. We'll we'll figure maybe we'll figure something out. So, okay, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Eric, uh, we'll talk about that maybe more next week. There's oh, yeah. I I sent Johnny yeah. the post something about um, it's not quite like a fantasy pick 'em side tangent tournament thing. I, I don't I don't know what's going on. We'll uh, we'll see if we can investigate. Uh, more of that and hopefully have uh, more info for you next week. So uh, for now, everyone, be well, be safe, have a great weekend. Uh, enjoy your spring break if that's what you're out doing or your family's doing or whomever. Uh, make sure you guys are safe wherever you might be because I know spring breaks run in wild all around the country. Uh, and I hope everyone's uh, going to be safe and have a good one. Thank you to Missy Gannon, our now one-time major champion. Uh, I think it's going to be one of many more to come. And uh, it was awesome to be in the booth calling the shots along with Zoe and Val Jenkins because uh, it, it, was, uh, it was a good battle. It was a great moment. And the parody in FPO continues. So for Johnny V, I'm the Disc Golf Guy. Congrats again to Missy Gannon. That is Smashbox TV Podcast 499. We'll see you next week. Step inside the Smashbox. Thank you to our $2 and above patrons. Your name is listed below in the credits. If you are interested in being listed as a producer in the Smashbox TV credits and supporting this and other fine podcasts, please visit patreon.com slash smashboxtv.